I was also using some of my synthetic brushes as well, just for some finer, more chiseled marks, especially for some of these rocks here. Hey everyone, it's Sam here. I've been in my studio for way too long. I've been in my office for way too long doing video editing and all that kind of stuff. And I really needed to get outside and go plein air painting. So I'm here at Topol Bay in Northern New Zealand. And I'm gonna spend the afternoon here and get some paintings done. Topol Bay is located in the far north of New Zealand, about an hour and 20 minutes drive from where I live. And it's just such a beautiful coastline with these really dramatic cliffs. And the sea's pretty wild as well. So it's a great place to go plein air painting. Now, whilst I was here at Topol Bay, I was able to get a couple of paintings done. And I started off with this warm up plein air painting, which I did because at the time of making this video, it had actually been a few months since I'd been painting outdoors. So I was a little bit out of practice. Now, the night before I was watching a painting tutorial video by the artist John Crump, who's also a New Zealand plein air painter. And he was talking about doing these quick 20 minute plein air painting sketches to get you into the flow of things again. Now he actually came to this very beach, Topol Bay, and painted this scene where he just painted a rock with some breaking waves. So whilst I didn't paint the exact same rock, I painted a very similar painting to his, but I also included the island in the background. So my aim with this painting was to see if I could get it done within 20 minutes. Now I'm painting here on a six by eight linen panel. This is made by a brand called SourceTech at canvaspanels.com. If you wanna get some, I've put a link in the description box below. I'm also using Blue Ridge oil paints as well. And again, if you wanna get some of those, I've put a link in the description box below. But when I paint outdoors on plein air, I always paint in oils. And what I'm doing here is I'm painting the darkest darks first. So these are the rock shadows. Now I can then use these dark darks to gauge off the white of the canvas so that I've got a range between my darkest darks and my lightest lights. Now the shadows in the island in the background are much lighter than the darks in the foreground and that's because we'll find our darkest darks and our lightest lights in the foreground but whereas landforms recede the darks aren't as dark and the lights aren't as light. So for those background shadows there I used a mix of ultramarine blue titanium white, a little burnt sienna, and alizarin crimson. And I've used those same colors in the rocks, but with no titanium white, at least for the shadow areas. Now for the sea, I've used a mix of ultramarine blue with a little yellow ochre, a little phthalo green, and titanium white. Now I was trying to paint this super quickly, and the other thing I was trying to do as well was just even loosen up my brushwork a bit more than usual and just get some loose painterly brush marks in there. So I'm using quite big brushes for the size of this canvas, number five flat brushes. And these brushes are made by Rosemary & Co. And again, if you wanna get some, I'll put a link in the description box below. Now here I'm just painting the highlights on the breaking waves using a mix of titanium white, but also with a little bit of burnt sienna and some of the shadow mix that I've used in the clouds in that background island. Now all the while whilst I'm painting, as well as using these thick brush marks, I'm thinking about the color harmony. So I'm using similar colors throughout my painting. This will tie all the zones together and make the painting look a lot more harmonious. Now at this stage, I felt that some of the shadow areas of the island could be a little bit darker. So I just mixed in some more shadow there. And then I started to paint the lights in the clouds here so the light that's shining on the clouds this is just titanium white with a little burnt sienna i even mixed in a little bit of yellow ochre as well just to warm up some of those clouds following painting the clouds here i then started to work on the sky and for this i used a mix of ultramarine blue with a little phthalo green and titanium white now i was painting super quickly here but what I'm trying to do, I'm not worried about detail, I'm trying to capture the essence and the feeling of the scene that I'm painting. And this is what I love about painting outdoors so much. I also find it very meditative and relaxing. Now here I was starting to think about getting this painting finished. 
I think by this point I've probably already taken over 20 minutes but I was working on the sand in the foreground also painting some reflections from the rock there. Now for the areas of the rock that's in the full sunlight I was using varying mixes of burnt sienna with yellow ochre, a little alizarin crimson, titanium white and some ultramarine blue to desaturate. Next I was starting to add some shadows to some of this white water and the breaking wave but one of the things that was bothering me about this painting was the splash that I'd created on this rock where the sea was crashing against it. I just felt like it wasn't working, so I decided to get rid of it. Now from a composition perspective, it's probably not the best. There are some parallel lines here with the breaking wave, but really I just wanted to get back into plein air painting and this was a warm up painting. Also, I want to get better at painting the sea in general outdoors on plein air. Now at this point I was not far from having this painting finished but I needed to bring out those waves a little bit more move them forward so I added some darker tones to the base of the waves again using a similar combination of ultramarine blue with a little yellow ochre, a little titanium white and some thalo green. I added some reflected light in the shadows of those rocks just to make them look a little more realistic and then I completed the painting by adding my lightest light, which was to the crests of these breaking waves using thick titanium white straight from the tube and a little bit of yellow ochre. At this point my painting was pretty much finished and I was making a few slight adjustments to the form of the breaking waves. I was having to be careful not to make too many drastic changes because I was thinking about something that John Crump had said in his video where he said that many a good plein air painting had been ruined by saying I'll just fix that bit over there. So I was very conscious of this and I didn't want to do too much more to this painting. But I was pretty pleased with the result, probably took me about 40 minutes but it was all good. Alright so I got my first painting done, I was trying to get it done in 20 minutes but I think it took a lot longer than that. But still good anyway especially as I've done any plain air painting in a few months so good to get back into it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint another artwork and I'm going to paint these beautiful cliffs here with the sea in the background. I've still got a few hours left here hoping it's not going to rain but I think it should be okay so I'm going to get into it. Okay so for this painting I'm painting on something a little bigger this is an 8x10 linen panel and again I'm sketching out my composition, I'm using Burnt Sienna mixed with Rublev Pale Drying Gel. And one of the main things I wanted to capture in this composition is part of the cliff there and that rocky foreground. There's also quite a bit of an opening there for the sky so I wanted to paint some clouds that are in the background just to make it look like it's an unsettled sky. Now the first thing I do is to paint the dark values first of all. So this is the rocks in the foreground, a mix of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and alizarin crimson, just a small amount of alizarin crimson. And then as I work my way back in the landscape here, I'm using those same colors for the cliff that's slightly behind the main cliff. And I've used titanium white in the mix. Then also for the island in the background and the cloud shadows, I've got more titanium white in the mix. Now for the areas of the rocks that are in the light in the foreground, again I've used the same colours but with titanium white in the mix and more burnt sienna. So burnt sienna is the more dominant colour in the mix. Now again right now I was still working on adding my dark values although I was painting some of those sandy coloured tones in the side of the cliff there. So the next thing I was doing was painting the shadows in the vegetation which was a mix of ultramarine blue with yellow ochre. The next thing I did after that was paint the horizon line of the sea and again I was using the same colours that I was using in the previous painting mainly varying mixes of ultramarine blue with yellow ochre, thalo green and titanium white. Now this was one of these really tricky scenes to paint partly because the cliffs are so high but also when I started painting it the sunlight was out but then suddenly it quickly clouded over again so I was having to remember where some of those dark shadows are. I did take a couple of photos of my iPhone so I was able to refer to that a little bit just to see where the shadows are but it's also 
important to remember why you should paint your dark values and shadows first for scenarios like this when the sun disappears behind the clouds. So I'm still able to remember where those shadows are, have the shadows in the scene and have the areas that are in the full sunlight. All up I found that this was a pretty tricky painting anyway and I wasn't able to stand in the area that I wanted to paint from just because it was so windy and it was a lot more sheltered by the edges of the cliff so really I did want to get more of the cliff in the scene but it just wasn't quite possible. I think what I'll do is I'll go back to this site and paint it again from a different angle on another day. Regardless I didn't want to let it stop me from painting so I just did my best from the area that I was painting from. So I painted the sky in the background and then painting the sand again in the foreground. And I was just trying to get the canvas covered so that I could then go back and start working in the dark areas, restating the dark values and just adding a few details to it. Not too much though, it is a plain air painting and I wanted to keep it loose and gestural. Now then, if you're an artist and you're struggling with your painting, you're just meeting roadblocks, having difficulties with composition, tonal values, creating depth in your paintings, colour mixing, and just being able to paint the artworks that you'd imagined in your head, but you're just having difficulty being able to do that, then let me help you. I'm giving away a load of free painting tutorial videos, including this landscape painting tutorial videos where I show you how to paint Milford Sound here in New Zealand. It's all free, just click the link in the description box below. Now back to the painting and I'd got the canvas covered in paint at this point. The next thing to do was to restate the dark values so I could start making it look a bit more realistic and three dimensional. Just starting to tidy up some of these areas and add more areas of interest within the scene overall, especially in the cliff. The cliff was pretty tricky to paint mainly because of the vegetation but also just because of the diffused light as it was just pretty much overcast from the rest of the afternoon. So I was having to still remember where all those light areas were. I added some darker clouds in there just to add to the overall mood and atmosphere of the sky. Just to make the sky look a little bit more kind of menacing. And also restated some of these highlights that are in the clouds. So this was a mix of pure titanium white with a little bit of yellow ochre and a small amount of alizarin crimson. Also just tidying up the bottom of the sky here as well. Now the next thing I wanted to do was to add my lightest lights in the scene which is in this breaking wave here and what I did was I used really thick titanium white with just a little bit of yellow ochre and I'm just troweling it on with my brush and really thick painterly brush marks and I was applying the paint just brushing it over the top gently so that it didn't mix in too much with the other paint underneath as it's wet. If I was to push harder with my brush then that paint would mix in more so it is a bit tricky trying to paint your lightest lights on the breaking waves here and just applying thick white paint but I think I did a reasonably good job here. I really wanted the breaking waves to stand out in the whole scene and after that I then just tidied up the last parts of the painting so just adding a few dark tones here and there, a few highlights as well to the rocks. I was also using some of my synthetic brushes as well just for some finer more chiselled marks especially for some of these rocks here. I finished up the painting by adding a couple of seagulls to the scene which just adds a bit of life to it. Overall I had a fun day painting out here on plain air and it was really good to get out of my studio and my office. I wasn't overly happy with this painting, I don't think it's bad either but you know really I wanted to get the cliff from another angle and it was just too windy so I think probably what I'm going to do is actually come back here to Topor Bay pretty soon and paint another view of the cliff from a different angle and see what I come up with and I'll be sure to video it as well and I'll upload it to YouTube. Thanks for watching, hope you're having a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next video.